the Renegade Open Show, 23.2. All right, welcome to the Renegade Performance Radio Open Show for 23.2. We're back again. Uh, Thanks to our sponsors, uh, Sugar Grips. And also, again, Faster, proud sponsor of the 2023 duets. Ah, so lads, two workouts. What are our initial thoughts? We've just finished watching uh, the two lads go. Cullen? Shit. Very insightful. It's good to see some shuttle runs, finally, some way to test some sort of running um, aspect before you get all those people going to regionals and stuff and they're not any good at running so it's good to finally catch them out i like it uh, i feel like it's going to mix up the leaderboard quite a bit uh you're going to have probably the lighter smaller guys that are going to throw out some pretty big scores on the first part on part a and then equally on the opposite side there's going to be some heavy lifters that are going to throw out some massive thrusters probably significantly heavier than what we just saw from the lads Um, now these guys probably aren't games contenders or even quarterfinals or semi contenders but they're still doing the open and they're going to mix up that leaderboard uh, quite significantly Um, so Uh, We're going to go through the same structure that we went through last week. Um, So we've given you our initial thoughts, give you some uh, of our predictions of what we think the best scores will be around the world after we've talked a little bit more about the workout. Um, And then, yeah, we'll dive in about how we think the uh, leaderboard is going to be shooken up uh, with those two different scores there. Um, Then we'll dive into a bit of strategy for those guys that are hoping to make it into the quarterfinals and then once again strategy for everyone who just wants to get their best result in this workout. A um, bit of our insight into just thoughts around how you should approach the uh, lifting portion and then uh, just a bit of a chat about uh, what you should do to prime yourself or prep yourself for the workout. So let's start off with um, the first part 23.2a. Uh, what are your thoughts, Cullum, on how guys that are trying to make it to that quarterfinal stage should approach this workout? Actually, we may as well talk to them together because they are a combined yeah, workout. Say, um, and so what are your thoughts on how they should be thinking about approaching this? Now we're talking, once again, fringe athletes, guys that are hoping to make that top sort of few hundred um, to get onto that next level. Got it this week. Um, yeah, so I think uh, obviously, as Zach has just mentioned, it is two parts, or um, well, there is two parts of the workout. Sorry, hold it. Uh, there are two parts of the workout, and I think with something like this, you need to make money on whatever your strength is. Uh, now, I know Aaron's going to talk about that in a little bit because he is a smaller, weaker, much, much weaker athlete. Um, whereas I'm going to use Jack Laker, for example. Um, even though he's not a fringe athlete, he's going to make that top 20. Uh, he is going to have to make his money on the burpees and the shuttle runs because he is a little bit weaker than some of the bigger guys. Um, now, I think for those guys that are on that bubble, trying to make that top 20%, you need to make your money where you are. If you're a strong athlete, you need to get through the shuttles and then conserve a little bit and save a little bit of energy so when you get to that barbell you can actually put up some big numbers because that will, as it has done in the past and has shown in the past, can skew the leaderboard quite a bit. Um, If you are a smaller athlete and you know you can uh, push hard for 15 minutes and you've got a big engine, then that's where you guys are going to make your money to be able to get the best score that you possibly can on the workout. Um, A first and a 15th is 16 points and an 8th and an 8th is 16 points, you know, as an example. So if you can kind of get a really, really good score, you kind of negate or you can cancel out that poor score on the barbell if that is going to be you. Azza? Uh, So my my approach is um, basically what Callum said, just about, apart from the weaker part. Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) It's not wrong. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I'll I'll be attacking this. Um, I'm going to actually start off with a faster pace um, through this first part, and then I'm going to taper off and just hold a steady pace and then speed up at the end. That's the the ultimate plan, um, because I'm trying to bank my points in this first one, because... You know the strength piece is never always uh, never really my my forte all right it's never really i'm going to climb in with the accessibility to it too so anybody can do that lift that like it like they said as well it's going to shake up that leaderboard quite a bit you're going to get somebody who is you know 
75 thousandth in the world that could possibly easily pull off a first place in this if they've got the strength in after that sort of capacity piece so like that's going to sh- shake it up quite a bit so for me it's just when i get to that lift it's just management at that point it's just management being smart um and yeah that's basically what i i want to see with it if you if you are the strongest sort of guy you probably won't want to go too hard in that first part you want to save some energy for that last part because like we said that's where you're going to bank bank those points but um yeah that's yeah about, about the same sort of thing yeah so um, i agree with both the boys on as far as strategy and you've got to play to your strengths in these workouts um the thing about the open that's different from a traditional crossfit comp is how far you can plummet on the leaderboard with a poor finish like and when you've got 20 30 thousand people in the region or however many people are in the region are doing the workout and of those that are stronger than you you could be having bloody top 30 finishes for i've seen it top 30 finishes for every workout and then a lift comes out and it fucks you um so it's uh damage control really um in that part and it's unfortunate but it's the nature of the open and um the open really is only there to and start the process of finding the fittest it's not there to make you feel good about yourself because i don't think anyone ever finishes feeling good about themselves <laughs> maybe 30 people in each region um and so there'll probably be a lot of people come tuesday when the leaderboards come out that have a lot of hurt feelings um so start preparing yourself uh for that now if you are on uh either end of the spectrum either an extremely uh, small fast athlete uh or a very strong uh athlete and you're gonna have to favor one of those uh, sides and so uh, let's dive into now um, sort of strategy thoughts for the uh, let's call it the general population who are hoping to get their best score in this workout Um, and so the RX version we've got burpee pull-ups and shuttle runs I actually haven't looked at the scaled versions yet what do we got for the scaled versions Um, is it just a burpee 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 to target target, burpee to target Cool. So a couple of things uh, to consider. First of all, um, uh, yeah, oh no, burpee pull-ups, and then, sorry, I'm just looking for the scaled, uh, scaled, oh yeah, burpees and shuttle run, yeah, sorry. Um, so for me, I'm not particularly good at pull-ups anymore, um, and so the jumping pull-ups, I feel like for your average general population average joe athlete the jumping pull up uh, that you saw the guys do in the open show i think that might actually blow out for a lot of people over the course of 15 minutes because those burpees are going to creep up pretty quickly you're going to be at sort of 50 plus reps if you make it to the fifth round um which is mm, pretty high um and so you may need to consider uh, using that kipping pull up to be able to um, keep yourself moving at a steady pace so that you're not missing any reps. That's just my thoughts because the, the jumping pull up will, it's going to jack your heart rate up um, it, it, because it is faster um, and you will probably blow out your pull at some point as well um, if you are in that sort of general population range. For those guys that are trying to get to that next level, you guys probably need to stick with the jumping, like the explosive jumping pull up um, as much as possible. So I'm just talking about the two different types of pull ups you got. You've got kipping into it so where you'd go through your kip swing and um, use your hip extension to get over the bar or you've got the one where you just jump straight up over the bar um, Aaron was talking about before about how keeping your hands off the bar for longer you think is going to allow you to get a little bit higher and float over that bar a little bit easier yeah so he was talking about a, a technique where you you're jumping up and then you're only grabbing the bar at the last minute um, to get your chin over the bar feeling like that's going to give you a little bit uh, bit more height and get over that a little bit easier with less emphasis on your actual pull so it becomes more of a jump than an actual strict pull. Um, on those shuttle runs um, my strategy is going to be just um, heart rate control um, that's going to be about a minute-ish every round hopefully um, of just steady moving but that's going to be a if you if you start to slow down on those shuttle runs i uh, suspect that's where a lot of your time is going to get chewed up and if you start lying on the ground for too long um i think that's going to be a lot of time chewed up there as well thoughts uh yeah no i agree um i think i think um heart rate regulation is massive through this first part so especially for the 15 minutes is a long time to be doing two movements so that's one thing you do have to remember um, so I've got I've written some notes slow and steady obviously it's very long 15 minutes heart rate regulation where you can so if you are pretty efficient at burpees and jumping into the rig and you can do as Aaron said like my 
my personal strategy is going to be jumping as high as I can and use that momentum to get my chin over the bar so I'm not doing a heap of pulling. Um, then that might be where you catch your heart rate. Running might be quite tough for you, so it's going to bump it up a little bit and then you can bring it down back on the burpees. It could be the opposite. Um, and if it is the opposite, then making sure you are controlling that heart rate and that breathing through those shuttle runs, being efficient in your turn, getting back to the rig um, and getting straight down on the ground and start getting into those burpees when you can. Um, and yeah, one note here I've just put is make sure you jump high on the burpees to use that momentum. I think that's going to be the biggest part. It is a lot of essentially strict pull-ups if you are going to go for that option. It's a lot of kipping pull-ups even if you're going to go for that option. Um, but I think if you can jump into the rig, use that momentum to get high enough to do a little bit less work with your arms. The residual effect from that to the thrust is going to be a whole lot less later on in the workout. Yeah, one thing I was, because um, I did just the first round um, before we jumped on this uh call cool. um and one thing i was just playing with various different pull-up techniques and the way that you come down from your pull-up is actually really important um with the jumping pull-up if your feet are landing in front of the rig each time that's an extra piece of movement that you have to kind of manage and so managing to find some sort of rhythm where your feet come down in the same place each time you push yourself back in the burpee each time that's going to be uh, so that you've got a consistent flow um, I think will be really important for you otherwise you'll be kind of all over the show your feet you're stepping back you're and then if you burpee in the wrong place then you have to step back before you jump and then that takes an extra um, couple of seconds each round and it really starts to add up it's wasted energy it's wasted time and so being aware of how you're coming down from your pull-up is also going to be quite important yeah so pretty much um pretty much the same as those fellas there too so um like uh like wizzy was just saying um i'm going for the old big jump minimal pull sort of um strategy on my uh, my pull-ups um i think what's also key is uh, for those on the you know, the fringe, the, the open athletes, is just knowing when it's time to change to your kipping if you need to. Because if you think about it, ultimately, if you're doing that half pull each time, you're doing half a strict pull up each time. All right, even with a little bit of momentum behind it, it's going to definitely start to add up. So knowing before it's too late that you need to change to that kip, kip swing into a pull up if you need to, rather than it's too late and your arms are completely gone. All right, so I think that um, you know don't be stubborn. All right, leave your ego behind. All right, I just want to do it how the games athletes do it. No, sometimes you need to change it up to suit you. So I think that's a big thing as well. Um, in terms of your foot placement on those burpees, okay, so you've got your line under your rig space. You should be using that as when you jump up out of your burpee you should be trying to get your feet as close to that line as possible so you are right underneath that bar okay like um, Z just said if your feet are on the opposite side of that line then you're probably going to be too far ahead and then you're going to have to step back and then jump into your pull-up all right which adds time okay so thinking about trying to keep your feet nice and close to that when you're burpeeing down that line's right under your rig space so thinking about trying to get that line somewhere around the mid chest sort of area all right so when we come up out of that burpee you're ready to go straight up onto that bar all right so just you know been minimalizing all those uh those little extra bits and pieces all right being smart about that but yeah that's that's my take on the pull-ups <clears throat> all right uh the shuttle runs they're shuttle runs like you've just got to stay engaged in the workout right that just that's an opportunity for you to switch off and that I'm, I'm not saying that is a good thing uh, I'm saying that that is a, a risk that you could start to slow down um, on that particular part of the workout so that's where a lot of mental toughness is gonna have to kick in so that you can keep moving yourself at a nice steady pace um, so that is yeah it's a hundred and fifty meters every round pretty much isn't it yeah um, so and because you're stopping and starting each time that's probably gonna be more like a 200 meter run if not slightly longer feeling um, and so that's just something to be aware of because that's those stop starts as well where it uh, is going to be fatiguing, bending down and touching the line. All right, um, let's talk about the uh, thruster now. So five minutes after a 15 minute workout, not a huge amount of uh, time. Um, you need your heart rate to be recovered. Um, you've got, you can start with your bar loaded. Um, you can have other people loading your bars, so there's a few perks, um, but what are your thoughts? How many lifts should athletes be thinking about getting in that five minute window? See? 
Um, I'm thinking probably four. I think I think you could bank on four. Um, me personally, I think like a 60, a 80, a 100, and then something that is uh, a little bit risky would 120. be 120. 120, yeah, 120, 130. Thinking about that, uh, that's going to be my kind of uh, idea around it. We'll see in about 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, I think I think you should bank on three good lifts, make three mm-hmm. lifts, and then your fourth one should be something that you kind of throw. Um, a, a weight that is 50-50 on the barbell and give it a good crack with a little bit of momentum and a little bit of enthusiasm from your gym, um, it might happen. I think um, one thing that you do need to be aware of is the effect of that many burpees and pushing off the ground, um, especially with the burpees and the jump to the rig, that is going to take a little bit of juice out of your thrusters. So what you usually be able to do fresh, you might need to pick that back a little bit and be a little bit more realistic about whatever number you put on the barbell. Um, one thing I will say before I pass you back to Z is if you are going to power clean, remember that that thruster and that drop into the bottom needs to have really good stretch recoil so you can get that barbell moving again. I do think it is better to do a full squat clean and then use that bounce and drive the barbell up out of the hole off the shoulders. Um, you'll see most of the top, 99.9% of the top guys do that. So if you are someone that does power clean and can get a little bit more weight on your shoulders with a power clean, remember you will need to drop fast and drive hard out of the bottom of that thruster to get that bar moving. But yeah, anyway, an answer to these questions, probably three or four lifts and um, bank that fourth lift as a uh, go for it kind of number. Yeah, as Cullum said, for most people, uh, the press is going to be the part of the thruster that you're going to fail, right? And so that's going to probably be significantly less than what you can power clean or even squat clean. Um, And so there's no real need. I don't think you're going to see many top scores come from a power clean plus a squat unless you've got like an outlying sort of strength or weakness. Um, And yeah, so just to reiterate what Cullum said, like kind of a thought process, um, First lift could be literally just to get your movement pattern because people underestimate how important movement pattern is going to something like a heavy lift. And so like, for example, say for example, I want to finish at 110, um, I would maybe go like 60 or 70 kgs. Like it doesn't even need to be heavy. It's just literally there to get that movement pattern. The second lift is something that I could hit any day. I could be sick, tired. Um, My girlfriend could have just dumped me. My dog could have just died. Um, and I would still hit that lift. That's what your second lift should be. Your third lift should be a lift that's like a pretty confident, done it before, think I've got a chance of hitting it, and then as Cullum said, uh, like a holy shit, I can't believe I hit that after all of that lift as your fourth lift. Um, That four lifts is a lot, and so that first lift needs to happen pretty quick. Um, Like some people might skip it and get away with it, but um, I highly recommend just getting that movement pattern um, for those heavier lifts because that's going to, that could be your saving grace that pushes you over the top. Um, And yeah, standard. To be honest, a thruster in an environment like this, I'm not a fan of because of the movement standard. Even with the head judge of the CrossFit Games, like Boz there, the reps that were being handed out um, at uh, the open show were pretty questionable, questionable in my opinion. Um, Aaron, your thoughts on the standards? Uh, yeah, it was shit. It was shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it was shit. The it's knees. the re-dipping of the knees. That is not a thruster. That's a, what we'd call a thruster jerk. Mm. So the movement standard does state that you've got to continue. The bar has to be continuously moving up in one movement. Um, the knees must uh, remain locked out. Is that correct? The rep must be completed in one fluid motion from the bottom of the squat. A front squat followed by a jerk is not allowed. Um, and so. I think there should have been more clarification on that because a step forward with the bar, like when you're locking out, that's essentially a jerk because you're you're becoming lower um, and you're getting yourself under the bar. So if your feet move throughout the thruster, that is no longer a thruster. Okay, and so you've got. We hopefully we'll see some integrity um, across uh, the board here. Um, and same thing is like if you're dropping underneath the bar, that that's a jerk. And so there's that's an also a no rep. Um, if you stumble backwards, that's also a no rep. But you, there should be quality lockout, stable um, position. You can arch your back. It might not be pretty technique but it's still that's a quality rep as far as the standards are concerned all right the moment you've all been waiting for predictions predictions <laughs> all right so we got a bit of an insight with the top uh, lads in the world already going i believe the top score was 168 yeah, 168 yeah. some somewhere around. 
Uh, no, 168. 168. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Jesus, sorry. Callum, sorry. 2 260. Sorry. <laughs> so, and that's his, that's his prediction, prediction for the week. <laughs> <laughs> so Callum's prediction is 260. Hey, um, so it's gonna it's a tricky one. So let's give both of our uh, predictions now. Um, seeing as I uh, won last week, I'll go first to to make it fair because yeah. the boys are gonna want to um, piggy tail off my piggy back off my. Uh, my predictions. Yeah, the reason why he's going first is because he's <laughs> going to say what we're all probably going to say. Nah, I, I think there's going to be some some smaller athletes that are going to um, that are going to rip into it and just absolutely send it. And so I'm going to predict uh, that the top score in the world is going to be. I'm going to go two ten. Two ten for the for the first workout. Um, and I'm predicting that there's going to be some animal of a human um, who is going to come along and is going to probably do bugger all in the first part of the workout, but is going to put up a. I'm just thinking like Tola, and I'm thinking like he's he's got like Tola's a. Going to walk thrust at 200. <laughs> to 200 kgs. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to go 100 and. 50 kgs all right so that's it that's my score 210 um, which is finishing the round of seven on the shuttle runs and uh, 150 kg thruster not from the same athlete from different athletes um but that, that i predict those are gonna be the top two scores yeah look i'm gonna um ride zach's coattails a wee bit here i i'm gonna make a prediction of a person i think ricky's gonna win ricky garrard is gonna win the guys on this um and i think he because I can't give the same prediction as Zach, I'm going to say he gets one burpee pull up in the round of oh, bastard. <laughs> one burpee pull up in the round of uh, of seven. So on the 35 burpee pull ups, uh, I know he can kind of. So what's that? That's that would be two oh one. Oh, 166. Sorry, 166. 166 is my prediction on the workout. Uh, I also think there'll be a big heavy thruster. Um, 150 would be pretty big time at the end of that. I'm going to say 140. I think 140 would be a, a pretty pretty reasonable lift for that, personally. I'm going to go with... So I reckon, yeah, you're going to have some smaller guys, but those shuttle runs are going to take quite a while. So I'm actually going to go lower than what Z, uh, Z said. I'm actually going to go with... I'm thinking about around 180, 183 reps. I reckon somewhere around there. So that will be about maybe about 12 no no sorry so 20 reps 20 reps of pull-ups so it's yeah so just just under 20 of the burpee pull-ups in the 35 round i just think at that point things are just getting too slow and then things are going to start accumulating too fast because the boys they weren't moving slow today like they weren't moving slow they they definitely weren't moving super fast towards the end but i just think uh i think I need to be a bit more sensible with my... Uh, I had high expectations for last week, and they all let me down. Yeah, I think I fucked up. I just did <laughs> I just did the maths, and if like you keep a minute on the shuttle runs, that's seven minutes to get through the seven rounds. And then if you say averaging a fit athlete at 15 burpee pull-ups a minute, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I can't change my score because I've already submitted it, but I reckon it's... It's gonna be it's gonna be in the thirty fives of the round of seven, um, so probably somewhere around that like one eighty five ish probably ballpark. But I put my I put my score in. I can't I can't take it back. Uh, so that's us lads. Uh, that's it. Should have done my math before, just rather than picking numbers out there. Hey, right, thank you. Good luck for this week, and we'll see you guys all next week. Peace.